My father never said anything bad about my mother, I don't have a mother, I don't even remember her. Only my father has been with me all this time. He is a rural man, taciturn, serious and thrifty. He is not good at praise, but he doesn't like to scold. Sometimes I start to show off and he looks at me with a deep sigh. At this time, I immediately lose the desire to make trouble. My father is a caretaker, we live in a small house five kilometers away, he likes living there, not very fond of humans, and it's closer to his work, he has a feed rack for wild boars, we will supplement food for them in winter, and a little further away there are salt rocks for elk to lick. My father likes nature, and he taught me to get used to living in nature. At school, I learned that motherhood is not uncommon. At first, I just listened to other kids talk about their mothers, but where was my mother? Who is my mother? My mother won't allow me to do this, my teacher always says to ask your mother about your father. I still remember thinking, if I did something bad, they'd call my mother too. But I don't have a mother. On February 23rd, we made a gift for dad in a handicraft class, and I was very happy because we finally got to dad. I knew that day that in fact there are many children without a father, but I am the only one without a mother, or even the only one in the whole school. For those children without fathers, the teacher allows them to make gifts for their mothers, because mothers can also defend the motherland and be good national defense personnel. However, on March 8, everyone started making gifts for mothers, and I made a wish for father in the same way as men's holidays. If mothers can defend their country, why can't fathers be the best mothers? The whole class and teachers laughed at my work, and I lost control and ran home. As soon as I entered the door, I asked my father, where is my mother? My father was a little stunned, but he calmed down quickly, sighed deeply, then dressed silently, took my hand and led into the forest, here is your mother's grave, father said softly. I asked why she died, she died when you were born, my father replied. I asked him if I could come here and he said any time. On the way home I realized what had happened and felt a tremendous amount of guilt because I took my mother's life and I was her killer and I felt so ashamed and disgusted that if it wasn't for me she would be now still alive, I didn't close my eyes all night, and in the morning I asked my father what my mother's name was. I don't know, said my father quietly, and a second secret was born in my life. Logically, my mother could be my father's wife, or at least they used to live together, and even in the worst case, they met occasionally, but how could my father not know her name? After thinking hard for a few days, I finally couldn't help asking my father, how is this possible, my father said, I don't know, what else can I say, he looked down, and then never asked again. Time passed and I was about to enlist in the military and I needed to provide my birth certificate and other documents to prove I was in school, but my father wasn't home and I was rummaging through drawers for the necessary documents. I looked through the files and suddenly found a folder, and I was shocked when I opened it. It was an adoption document, and a third secret was born in my life. At night, I didn't dare to ask my father, I didn't know what to do. In those documents I know that my father adopted me, but I haven't told him yet, I want to wait until I go to the army to ask him. At conscription point, my father held me tightly and cried, not hiding his tears. There are boys whose mothers did not cry either, but whose fathers did. I didn't ask him, and two years passed quickly, and I would come back and speak to him. I left and he honestly waited for me, wrote me, and told me suddenly that he had passed away. After retiring, I went back to an empty house, and it seemed like there were footsteps right away, and my father came back. But no, my home was empty, and the mystery of my birth was never solved. Not long after, I decided to go to the chairman, firmly take my father's place, and handed it along with other papers to the chairman, who handed me an envelope containing a letter from my father, as if he had a premonition of his own death, wrote a letter to me to provide guidance for future life. It turned out that this letter was written a long time ago, when I was very young. At the end of a letter, 
My father answered all my questions and revealed all my secrets. I can't read letters or talk about my mother. She was a prostitute who made a living on the road and lived anywhere. Once, she was bullied by a group of wealthy locals, who took her to the forest and left her there. A little bear found her in the forest, and my father brought her back from the little bear, who took care of the beasts in the forest, and took care of her. She regained consciousness, but she did not recover from the trauma she experienced. The woman, who has partially lost her memory, remembers what happened but deliberately forgot her name. Besides that, she also got pregnant and the delivery was very difficult, the lady died and my father buried her in the forest and adopted me. He can't give me to anyone. Falling in love with my mother because he took care of her, he knew everything. He knew she was a whore and he didn't know if my dad was one of those jerks or one of the previous clients. Father knows everything except my name. We got married soon and lived on my father's land, and although the paperwork was a bit of a hassle, I finally got my wish. Now he lies by the forest river with my nameless mother. A car broke down and attracted adult polar bears and cubs to attack. They slapped windows and blocked the way. They refused to leave even though the driver honked the horn. Why did polar bears block the car? What happened? In the animal world, polar bears are one of the largest land carnivores in the world. 98.5% of their food is meat. Their main diet is seals and occasionally carrion. A garbage truck has broken down on a road in a northern Russian city. Just as the driver was trying to repair it and get out of there as soon as possible, ten polar bears suddenly rushed over. No matter how much the driver honked, they didn't leave. They're only interested in the kitchen waste in the back of the truck. According to the driver, this garbage truck was responsible for transporting domestic garbage. There's a lot of rotten food in it. When the truck broke down, some polar bears arrived quickly. There were about six adult polar bears and four cubs. The cubs couldn't climb and could only walk on the road. Adult polar bears quickly climbed into the garbage truck to rummage for food. The driver guessed that the smell from the food waste was strong, so it attracted nearby wild polar bears. A polar bear stared at the driver. It looked at the driver through the windshield. When the polar bear stood on two legs, it was almost as tall as the driver of the cab. Generally speaking, adult polar bears stand up to 2.8 meters upright. The driver was sweating from fright. After the driver felt scared, he contacted his colleagues at the adjacent workstation because he was worried that he would be injured. The driver tried to drive polar bears away by turning on the radio, but it did not work. The driver and colleagues saw an incredible scene and filmed it. A male polar bear climbed into the truck body to get food, while the female polar bear and cubs waited by the wheel. The driver thought that if he rushed the truck away, he would hurt polar bears. Therefore, he decided to stop where he was. He said he didn't want it to happen. However, these polar bears did not attack the people in the car, but just asked the driver to give them some food. After the driver gave them food, polar bears left immediately. After this thrilling incident was uploaded to the internet, some netizens admired the driver and lamented that the polar bears must be starving. The adult polar bear stopped the truck and climbed into the body for its cubs. Some netizens believe that these polar bears robbed the garbage truck because the recent melting of glaciers has destroyed their habitat and reduced their food sources. More and more polar bears risk their way into human territory in search of food. Most local residents believe that they look for food in places where people gather because they are hungry. Our domestic garbage has become a food source for hungry polar bears. Therefore, hungry polar bears rob the garbage truck regardless of the honking. This is the survival test of polar bears and an issue that all human beings need to face up to and take responsibility for. Statistics show that the habitat of polar bears is the sea area with floating ice near the Arctic Ocean.
Arctic ice continues to shrink due to global warming. In the past 25 years, the Arctic ice has been reduced by 40%, so the polar bears have less and less habitat, the hunting environment is getting worse and the food source is decreasing. In search of food, groups of polar bears broke into human residences near the Arctic Circle, which has raised concerns. As climate change intensifies, the living environment of polar bears has been greatly damaged. Perhaps this species will become extinct by 2100. This requires human attention and protection. We should avoid the continued destruction of polar bears' habitat. As one of the largest land carnivores, the polar bear also needs human protection. Many people have struggled with this in their lives. A polar bear cub is raised at the Columbus Zoo in the United States. Its name is Nora. Maybe some people wonder why this polar bear is not in the North Pole. In fact, its mother left six days after it was born because of food shortages or carelessness. Then it's adopted by the zoo. The staff raised it up. It became the mascot in the zoo. It's cute so everyone loves it. But it should stay in the Arctic. The zoo was unable to send it to the North Pole for various reasons. The temperature in the zoo can reach 30 degrees Celsius. It's obviously far from the natural conditions that polar bears like, which is quite detrimental to their health. In order to cool it down, they thought of many ways. Finally they prepared a basin of ice cubes for it. It's born in the white ice field, but now it only got a basin of ice. It's really embarrassing. When the cub saw the ice for the first time, it jumped towards it instantly. It plunged into the ice and rolled around. Maybe that is the smell of home. It was familiar with ice. It seems that it has not forgotten where it came from. For Nora, this may be the happiest moment. It is really happy. The basin can hardly hold it. Nora even excitedly bit a large piece of ice. While playing by the water, the ice cube accidentally slipped into the water. It looked at the ice in the water in bewilderment. Then Nora stood on the stick and pawed at it, but failed to find it. Maybe it didn't know that the ice cube would melt. It stood on the stake and dared not jump into the water. At this time, Nora seems to have temporarily forgotten that it can swim. It likes swimming very much. After losing its ice cubes, Nora returned to the house and played with bubbles. Although it left its home, its life is still full and satisfying. In the zoo, people take good care of it. The breeder prepared many kinds of toys for it. It's playing carefree. It has snow white hair. The staff worried that the polar bear was lonely, so they bought a bear doll that looked like it to play and sleep with it. It regards that toy as its good friend. I have to admit that such a life is really enviable. For many polar bear cubs, their fate are unfortunate. They're supposed to live with their mother in the habitat. However, because of the temperature, the glaciers are gradually melting and their food is short. Many adult polar bears suffer from severe hunger. Therefore, many little polar bears were sent to the zoo. They were raised there. Although they didn't worry about food, they seemed to be missing something. If humans protect the environment, the chances of polar bears existing after the end of this century will increase. Do you say, hello, or, goodbye, when you see the polar bear? In fact, the fate of polar bears is affected by us. What we want to save is not the polar bear but ourselves.